everyone, and welcome to Redeemed Christian Fellowship live stream. My name is Brad Cutliff, and tonight we're going to be talking about not letting your natural thinking affect your faith for healing. So, first thing I want to do is just go over some scriptures uh, that should be familiar to everyone. Uh, the first one is Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4 through 5. Thank you, sir. The next one is at Matthew 8, 16 through 17, and the third one is 1 Peter 2, 24. <clears throat> so, like I said, we're talking about not letting our natural thinking affect our faith for healing. And I thought it would be important to establish that healing was provided for us in the atonement, and there's, there's far, few, far better ways to prove that than these three scriptures. Isaiah 53, 4 through 5 says, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. That was a prophecy by Isaiah of the coming Messiah, and it says in the end, and with his stripes we are healed. Well, Matthew says in chapter 8, verses 16 through 17, when the evening was come, they brought unto him, Jesus, many that were possessed with devils. He cast out the spirits with his word, and he healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. In 1 Peter 2.24 it says, who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. So, the first thing we need to do is make sure that we have a foundation through the scriptures that it is God's will to provide healing for us or that he has provided healing for us. And we can see right here, the Bible says through uh, two or three witnesses that all, every word is established. So we have three witnesses here that Jesus by his stripes and by the price he paid for us, we have been provided healing by that. And I wanted that to be a foundation because you never know who's listening. Somebody may have never heard this before. And especially today, there are so many voices. And if the voices that are speaking, whether they're ministers or ministries on TV, if they're not saying this, then they're not following the word of God soundly. And so, like I said, there are many people saying many different things. And there are some ministers who don't believe that healing is for today and that, doesn't, that don't believe that we can be healed by God. But the scriptures are very clear, and this is just one set of scriptures, and there are many, many scriptures that support that healing was provided for in the atonement. So I believe that without a shadow of a doubt, just based on these three alone, that by the stripes of the Lord Jesus, we've been made whole. And we can be healed. So when it comes to knowledge of the word of God, that's where we stay. Because if you have a pain or if, you ha or if you're oppressed in any way or if you're depressed, uh, sick or diseased, these things bring a lot to the physical body. They impact the physical body. They impact the way that we think, we feel. We, we really feel the things that are coming upon us. And what can happen is those feelings and those things that we deal with, they affect the way we think. And uh, Dave, I like the way he said it last week when he was talking about this. He said, be careful not to go Google everything that when you get a pain or an ache or something happens to you because that can really contribute to the confusion or the fear or the worry that could come upon you naturally. That's just simply, and that's what I want to talk about tonight. That's a natural response. It is natural to, when a pain comes upon you, to wonder what that is, to want to take something for it, and not that there's anything wrong with that. So it's natural to think certain things. It's just the natural process. But what I want to, the next scripture I want to read is to help people understand that we don't have to live that way and it's quite the contrary. There are, there are places that we can live as believers. I'm talking about as believers. So let me read Colossians chapter 1, verses 12 through 13. It says, 
giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers in the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. Darkness is a life without God, governed by the world system. It's a, it's a system where Satan is the God of, and it's a place where people process life naturally. It's a life without God. It, and when I say naturally is when our physical senses, we sense things, we see things, we hear things, we feel things, we just process, process those, three, those things with our soul, with our mind, in our thoughts, and we do naturally what you're supposed to do when something like that comes upon you, whether it's a, an ache or a pain or some type of disease or illness, you, do, you take natural steps. And there are, there are certain aspects of that that aren't wrong because we absolutely believe in doctors. Uh, we believe doctors, faith, and medicine all work together. But there's a place that we can live and should live as believers where um, that place of in the kingdom of his dear son. In the kingdom of his dear son is a place of living by faith. That's, that's the operation in the kingdom of God. Our operation, the way that we operate, you've got that natural way of living where you would naturally respond to something, a pain or an illness or some type of oppression, and you think, you think about it, and you, sometimes those thoughts are, you know, I wish I could overcome this. I wish this would end. I'm so tired of this. Th these things can lead to hopelessness. I'm really getting ahead of myself. But, but in the kingdom of God, where we have been translated into, we live by faith, and faith is of the heart. And so the way we operate is by faith, and that's faith in God's Word. And that's why I started out with these three scriptures on healing, because we have to have a promise to stand on in order to believe that God will heal, uh, heal, our, heal our bodies and deliver us from anything that could come upon us. And there is nothing that can come upon us that God can't deliver us from, nothing. So, hallelujah. So even though we've been translated out of darkness, we still need to renew our minds because our minds are not saved. Our spirits are born again when we become born again. But our minds still have to be dealt with. Our bodies still need to be dealt with because our, body, our bodies come under temptations. Our bodies have desires. Our minds think things. We feel things. And so there are scriptures that talk about that. And I believe Dave again read this last week. So... Um, but first, let me read another scripture, because I want to make sure that in ministering this word, that you have hope, that you don't have to stay in the condition that you're at if you are in some type of condition, or you are dealing, or you're dealing with something, even if it's been for a long time. Because the hopelessness and the, and the despair, that is in the natural life. And if you're born again, you don't need to be hopeless and in, 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 in despair, because you operate in the kingdom of his dear son. You operate in light and you operate in the ways of God because you're born again. And the power of God is available to you if you believe and if you trust in the promise of, promises of God that by his stripes you've been healed, then you can be healed. So we don't live in places of despair even though we can face that sometimes. Even though some conditions, they last a long time. Some attacks on our bodies, they can last a long time. And the goal of this message is let's move away from that place if we find ourselves there where that's all we're thinking about or that's all we're dwelling on because that will affect our feelings and we can become even more depressed or more uh, fearful about a certain condition that we're dealing with and that we're believing God with. What we want to do is start moving over into that realm of, of faith where the operation of God takes place and where healing takes place. That's where we want to move over. So those thoughts and those feelings, we've got to start taking a stand against them. And I'll talk about that here in a little bit, although I think this is going to go really quick. I might have to make it a two-parter. Um, but let me read another scripture. In John chapter 16, verse 33, because we talked about that world system and that place of living without God. Jesus said, These things I have spoken unto you that, you, that in me you might have peace. And that's why it's so important to stay in Christ. That's where the peace is. Because when we're, when we're under attack and our bodies are under attack, we can find ourselves out of peace very quickly. 
And so it's very important to stay in Christ and stay in the Word and stay in peace because our minds can overwhelm us and cause us to be full of fear, anxiety, and we can lose our peace. In, Jesus said, in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, cheer I have overcome the world. Everything that's in the world, all the fear, the doubt, the pain, the sickness, the disease, Jesus has overcome. And Hebrews tells us that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that's why I love those three scriptures. Nothing changes in Christ. He healed then. He's, he healed in the scriptures. He's still heal, healing today. And that's why th this type of message is so important because there, there are people, like I said, that are saying a lot of different things. And I think there are ministers that just don't know the word and they, some don't know or don't believe that healing is for today or healing is for us. And that's a shame because the scriptures are really clear. That's why it's so important to continue going over them over and over. So let's read uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. Romans 12, 1 through 2, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. We know the will of God through the Word of God. And so Paul's, Paul's dealing with a couple. Let me read you the, the New Living Translation first before I get ahead of myself. I like this. The New Living Translation says, Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. God's will for us is to be healed and to be whole. That's what God's will is for us. So we don't want to copy the ways of the world. We want to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, which is renewed through the word of God, so that we don't tend towards or lean towards the way we think about how a situation sh should be handled or, or something, a situation that comes our way. And again, I think Dave talked about this last week, and I, ha and I had it in my notes from several weeks ago, so I thought it was great that he was talking about. But he talked about cancer and, or, or, or a diagnosis that could kind of take your breath away or overwhelm you, naturally speaking. That would be a natural response. But if our minds are renewed to God's word, then we can be disciplined enough to say, no, that's not the truth. That might be a truth, but it's not the highest truth. There's a higher truth with respect to that diagnosis. And that is, by his stripes, you are healed. Uh, Deuteronomy talks about all of the different sicknesses and diseases that have been ever, ever known to man, mankind. And there's nothing, nothing that will ever rise above the name of Jesus. Everything is under the name of Jesus. Everything, every sickness and disease, any type of oppression or bondage, it all has to submit to the name of Jesus. Nothing is greater than that. So, so we always want to make sure that we are staying in the life of God, in the word of God, and renewing our minds to his word so that we don't find ourselves there. Because it's easy to do that, especially if the attacks, the attacks are hard and if they, take, they seem to be taking time. That's why it's so important to make sure we are staying in God's word, keeping our minds renewed to what God's word says, um, and, then, and then making responses spiritually from our heart, from a place of faith in what God's word says, not about what we feel or how we think the situation is going to go. It has to be a life of faith, a speech of faith, an act of faith, and we'll talk about that. So conforming is simp simply patterning your lifestyle to include your thinking to the way the world acts and the way the world thinks. That's natural living. The world would say, again, you have cancer, you're going to die. And you can imagine all the thoughts and feelings that would be associated with that type of diagnosis. Again, it could overwhelm you. If you're built up and you're strong spiritually, you might just laugh at that. You might just say, no, because you know the word. You might be at a place where I, I'm not... I don't have cancer. I'm not going to believe that. Let me just go pray. We'll get that handled. That may be where you're at. You may not be where, that, where you're at. That could cause fear to come into a person's life because it's so deadly. But again, 
That's a natural process. That's natural living. And God has delivered us out of that place into a place where we can live by faith, where we can have the confidence that because of his promises, we don't have to die of any sickness or disease. We don't have to be diseased in our body. We don't have to let that stuff stay upon us or come upon us. So be transformed. To be transformed is to change from one form of another, like a caterpillar to a butterfly. The process of changing the natural way of accepting a situation only comes by renewing our mind or changing the way that we think. And we're not talking about mind over matter. This isn't some type of exercise in metaphysical science. That's not what we're talking about. Because the scriptures, Paul addresses renewing the mind. So we can't just take that and say, or say, well, that's, you're trying to do some type of mind over matter or metaphysical. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the process of our, of our three-part being, body, soul, and spirit. So as Paul addresses the body and the mind in, those, in that scripture, then that's something that we need to be aware of. It, it, it's, he addresses it for a reason, because he knows that the natural mind will perceive things a certain way. And that's why, we have to, that's why he said to renew it, to constantly renew your mind. Hallelujah. Through the word, God simply provides us with the understanding that there is now, through Christ Jesus, a new way of living, a new way of thinking, a new way of processing circumstances and situations in this life. The new way of living is a life lived from the heart or from our spirit, our renewed spirit. I made this statement, we'll never experience the complete victory that God's word promises us if we don't do something about the way that we think. In Romans chapter 10, verse 10, because we talked about the heart, Romans 10, 10, it says, For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So when it comes to believing God to heal your body, that process is accomplished by faith from the heart, because faith is always from the heart, it's not from the mind. Hallelujah. So, let me read another scripture. Well, let's see what much time we have here. Let me gather my thoughts for a second. Let me talk about casting your cares. So what do we do when our minds get, do get overwhelmed? What do we do when those thoughts, just, we just can't seem to get those thoughts out of our heads? Well, of course, we go to the Word. If we fill our hearts with the Word, and we're filling our eyes with the Word, and if we read, we're filling our ears with the Word, then that will be consuming us. And again, that'll help to renew our minds, and then it'll be easier to do these next few things. One, uh, casting your cares. So let me just read some of my notes. A sickness or a disease or any type of oppression can really trouble our minds. It can overwhelm our thought life. Uh, there could be pain involved. You might be limited due to a certain affliction, and it could lead to hopelessness. All of these worries, cares, doubts, fears are designed to keep us living naturally. That's the way the devil would want it. Because again, the Bible says that Satan is the god of this world, little g. So he, he's the god of the, of the operation of that system where all of those things operate in, the place that we've been translated out of. So if you're full of burdens or cares or worries, Psalms 55, 22 says, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. For he shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Casting all of your care upon him, for he cares for you. Casting our cares is just one, one way for us to get free from that constant bombardment of thoughts that go contrary to God's word. And we see that also in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 through 5. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And we can develop strongholds in our mind when it comes to physical attacks. Those strongholds of hopelessness, of I'm never going to, nothing's ever going to change. Those are thoughts that are contrary to God's word. We've got to deal with that. We have to speak against it. Jesus said, and I, and I had this scripture open because I, I knew I'd get to it. Jesus said in Mark 11, 23, and 24, he said, Verily I say unto you, that whosoever, sh whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, 
and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. We talked about what we need to do. Casting our cares upon the Lord is something that we should be doing if we're overburdened by something we're going through. But we also have to speak what we believe. We have to speak what we believe. Jesus said this, and I'm so glad that Jesus did, and not somebody down the road that doesn't know what God's Word said. Jesus said this. He said, if you say to this mountain, be removed and cast in the sea, and if you don't doubt in your heart, but you believe that those things, but believes those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. You can say, you can say a lot of things as you're walking through the challenges of life. If, as you're walking through those things that you're experiencing that are attacking your body. You can say a lot of things, but are they said in faith? When you speak, you should be speaking God's word by faith. Because you can, there are a lot of people that can quote God's word. The Bible says even, even the devils know the scriptures. But when you speak by faith, and that's why it's so important to stay in the Word. So if you've got something that's attacking your body, stay in the Word regarding healing. Continuously go over those scriptures, just those three alone. Stay in them until Revelation, and then say that. And then say, by His stripes I'm healed. I, I had, uh, I had this, this, thing, this thing on my face over here. Uh, it turned out to be shingles. Well, I started getting pain under my eye and above my eye. And as soon as I did, I started praying. And I said, Father, I just thank you that I'm healed. I didn't know what it was. I had, I had no idea, but it was a weird pain. And, and so I did, a, I did a telemedicine video conference. And I'm like, hey, Doc, can you, can you see that? Can you see what it is? I thought it was a bug bite. It, it, it seemed logical. It was just it was painful. It was kind of starting to form like a little cyst. And then it broke into a scab. And the, and the pain was excruciating. So I went back to the doctor and said, hey, you know, I don't know what this is. The, the, the stuff you gave me is not working. But I was saying before that for four days, Father, I just thank you that I'm healed. I just thank you that I'm healed. I don't know what this is, but I know your word. I just thank you, but by his stripes, I'm healed. I just kept saying that. And I, st I went to the doctor. It didn't bother me at all. And he says it's shingles. And he said, you're really fortunate because shingles travels along nerve, nerve, nerve paths because I had a patch here and I had a patch over in the corner of my eye. He said, if this had gone this way, it could have blinded you. I said, well, thank God I prayed. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter if your body experiences things. The important thing is, is that you're speaking what you believe and that you're believing God. I don't worry about this. this it, it's, go, it's gone away. But I'm not saying what would have happened if I didn't pray. The point is, if something's attacking your body, pray. Start to pray and start to speak God's word. And, 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 and do that in faith. Do that believing. And I know that there's tons of fears, worries, doubts, and cares that come along with that are always going to be warring against your soul when you're believing God for healing. That'll be there. And like we talked about, we've got to deal with that. You can rebuke fear. You can rebuke doubt and just say, no, the Word says this. And that's where we should stay. Praise God. Well, I think I'm close to being out of time, so uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. God bless you. I'm going to pray, and I want everybody that might be watching to be praying with me. Let's believe God together that whatever you're going through, God will deliver you from. So, Father, I just thank you for your word. I thank you for your precious promises. I thank you for what Jesus did for us in providing healing for our physical bodies. Father, if there's anybody out there or even in this room that's experiencing a, si a sickness, a disease, something that's been troubling them for, for a while. Father, I just pray in Jesus' name, I just speak to that sickness or disease, that, that thing that might be binding them up, causing them problems or distress, getting them in a place of despair. I rebuke that thing in Jesus' name, and I thank you, Father God, that the healing anointing and the power of God is moving on these people's behalf that are believing and trusting in you to be set free from conditions that have plagued them for any amount of time. Father, I thank you. I praise you. I give you glory. And I just, 
I just pray, Father God, that everybody that has a need to be healed will be healed in Jesus' name by your power and by your authority, and I give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless every one of you. I hope you all have a wonderful night.